Hey everybody, Chris Farad here, and uh, today I've got something pretty special for you. Uh, we're going to be doing a mission from the Phantom Doctrine game that's releasing August 14th. Uh, if you haven't heard of this, a lot of people are comparing it to XCOM, but we're set in quite a different uh, location and time. We are doing this during the peak of the Cold War, and the idea is that we're this leader of a secret organization called the Cabal, and we've got a prevent this global conspiracy that's happening um, that is like pitting these world leaders against each other. And we do that by going on these different missions, uh, investigating classified files, we interrogate enemy agents. Some of our agents could be undercover and like screwing us over later on. It's, it's really interesting to see how that will all play out. Um, if you guys are interested in uh, pre-ordering the game, GOG is doing something at 10% uh, off, but uh, because they support our channel a lot, they are giving us 15% off pre-orders if you want to uh, check that out. I'll have a link down below. But uh, yeah, let's try a mission here from Phantom Doctrine. I've gone through and done the tutorial. Uh, I got sent a couple of save files. This is the one I picked. We're going to do this mission called Fearsome Kingpin. And uh, let's just rock and roll. So this is future Chris popping in. I'm recording this after I have played this mission. Uh, the way that we're actually going to approach is the first half of the mission, we do like a lot of stealth. And the second half of the mission, we do uh, more like action-packed gunfighting. Uh, both of them are really interesting. Both of them were really fun. Hopefully you guys enjoy. And uh, here we go. Primary objectives are to eliminate the cell's leaders, evacuate upon completing that main objective. Secondary objective is to rescue this imprisoned agent. So the idea here is that we had an agent that um, some point during the campaign got captured and they've been interrogating them and getting information about us. So we need to go and rescue them, and then we can use them on the mission, and then use them back uh, in our main campaign as well. Okay, so this is the beginning of the mission. Uh, in the save file that they've given me, they have already done the pre-mission work, like selecting which agents are going to be here, and dropping us into a specified drop zone on the map. I feel like what we should probably do is just take a minute or two to review the interface, and understand what is going on because there's a lot to take in here uh this mission is taking place in like the middle of the campaign i guess and so we're gonna have like different abilities more guns just more stuff at our disposal uh so let's start really basic these are our six agents here uh four of them have the exclamation point beside them what that means is that they are openly hostile and that's due to the combat attire that they're wearing so the combat attire of uh, wearing, you know, a riot helmet and a vest is going to alert these guys yeah. if we go near them. So if I selected somebody that was, um, that is geared up like this, you're going to notice that we have a detection range for these militia members. And if we were to go into that range, then the alarm is going to get raised and reinforcements will come. We'll have more people to fight. Uh, however, Lamster and Canasta here, they're dressed in plain clothes. And because of that, they can walk right in front of these guys, do whatever they want. As long as they're not doing anything sketchy, um, they're going to go unnoticed. So pretty cool that your attire actually has some influence there. Um, looking closer, we have health bar, pretty standard stuff. And right under that, we have this dark blue bar. This is your awareness meter. This is really important. You can't see the numbers just on your character glance, but if you look down here, yeah. you'll see that... Uh, they are numbered. So this guy's got 91 awareness, Magellan has 78, Durand has 75. Basically, awareness is like the most important resource you need to keep your eye on in all of these missions. It governs your ability to uh, dodge shots. It governs your ability to use certain items and abilities. And if you're running out of awareness, you're going to be taking way more damage because you're not uh, dodging at all. Phantom Doctrine doesn't have a percentage-based targeting like XCOM does. Every shot that you take is going to hit. The only thing that um, could change is the amount of damage that you do, and that is based on potentially the awareness and the cover that uh, enemies are behind. So we'll explain that in a little bit more detail as we get into fighting. Um, there's just a couple other things to show you interface-wise. So, uh, you see the blue arrows here, and then the orange uh, diamond? The blue arrows, they represent the um, action points, okay? So you move here, that's one. You, would, you can move here for two. 
and then you have firing points represented by the orange diamond. So if we're going to take a shot here, and let's say we're taking a full auto shot, it's going to be one fire point, one action point. If we did something like a burst shot, it would just be a fire point, no action point required for that. So really flexible, and if you compare it to XCOM, XCOM is very much like move, shoot. Um, this game, you can vary that up quite a bit depending on what abilities you have and how you want to execute your moves. So. That pretty much explains the agent level stuff. Um, as I mentioned, they do have uh, passive abilities, they have perks that you earn, uh, and then those status effects represented by um, uh, these icons. So pretty, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. There's some similarities to XCOM, but the underlying systems are quite a bit different. Now, uh, moving down a little bit, we see these four red heads here. As you can imagine, these are enemies that are within vision. So we've got uh, these militia guys. We also have uh, this agent over here, Agent Vasco. Now, agents are kind of like us in the sense uh, that they have awareness right now. Uh, I think the militia guys would have awareness if we raise the alarm, uh, but because they're not on alert, there's no awareness for them right now. Uh, but agents always have that, so just something to keep in mind. And then under that, we've got uh, the different weapons that each person is carrying. You'll notice that they're each carrying two different weapons, and then they all have um, abilities that they can choose from. They have equipment that they can use. Everybody's carrying different stuff. Equipment-wise, we've got flashbangs, frag grenades. We've got uh, blister gas bombs. We've got first aid kits. We've got boosters and smoke grenades so like we got a wide variety of items proximity mines lock picks and that kind of stuff over here this is a really cool one so in your when you're doing uh your mission loadouts you can assign certain special tactic support to different areas of the map so you'll notice here we have a sniper that can come from it, it's got to be on the north side a uh, grenade launcher from the east, and then a neurotoxin from the south. These are things that you can use command points on, and they have a cooldown. But like as a sniper example, this is positioned from the north. We could target this guy and do a ton of damage, and it doesn't use up one of our uh, one of our agent's turns. Uh, same thing with the grenade launcher. If we were to target here, it's going to be it's going to be tough. Like, let me show you an example. I can't target here. You see that line where that's coming from? It's coming from the east. If I come from here, we can do it. But anything that would be behind a building that's blocked um, from that east side, we can't target. So your positioning is really important. And then you also have neurotoxin that we can deliver from the south. And you can see where that line is coming from. So it's just a, it's a cool system that um, can be really powerful in the right hands. So, okay. Mission-wise, let's get uh, let's get rocking and rolling here. So you'll notice that we have silencers on a lot of these guns. You can see it visually, uh, but also when you go to attack somebody, uh, if it's not silenced, like if I switch over to this gun, you'll see the little icon representing the fact that it's going to reveal and alarms are going to go. Uh, so let's start trying to take these down quietly if we can. I'll move uh, deadpan in, stay outside of detection range. We'll make sure that we've got the uh, silenced... Um, BM and we're gonna take this guy down now he doesn't have any awareness so he will take the maximum damage if this guy had full awareness and it was showing this then he would take the minimum damage okay if it's if he's got half he'll take like somewhere in between and that's kind of how the the damage ranges work now this changes based on whether you're taking a full auto shot a single shot or a burst shot um, the other key factor here is that when an enemy does have awareness, you want to use full auto first to reduce their awareness and suppress their awareness regeneration. It just regenerates turn after turn, uh, but you want to use full auto to get rid of it and then start taking your shots. So uh, we don't need to do that because he doesn't have any. So we're going to use our burst attack for 47 and we're going to use we're going to conserve a little bit of ammo. It is silenced, so we should be able to do it quietly. My skills are at your disposal. Okay. Now, um, this guy's facing this way. This guy's facing here. But if you'll notice, let's choose somebody with uh, detection here. So his kind of detection range ends about here, which is why he doesn't see this guy go down. Uh, we're going to move Durand in. And we'll make sure we've got the silenced weapon. 
We'll take a shot at this guy. We're on burst. Can we do it with single? No, we can't. Uh, so let's go with burst. Switches over to the silenced weapon. Boom, boom. Okay. Next up, we have one more guy left. We can take him out, I think. If we move Canasta up. So that's two of the ten. Now, these guys are all basic, right? It's, we're taking them down pretty easily. Um, that'll, that'll likely change. Okay, so let's take another burst shot here. Copy. There we go. Three down. Now, what about these bodies? Okay. This, I really like this about this game, is that uh, you can hide these bodies. And you don't, it's not the typical way of doing it where you go pick up the body, drag it somewhere, dump it. It actually just like gets rid of the body somehow magically. So if I go here and choose a dispose body ability, you'll see the requirements are pretty heavy. Like in this scenario, we got to use two action points and a fire point to do it. Uh, but these guys aren't doing anything anyway. So we're going to do this disposal and show you what happens. Just like that, they're gone or they're hidden or whatever. So I like to imagine, you know, like if we get rid of this guy, we've got this box here, maybe we're putting him in or we're putting him in the van or what have you. It doesn't really matter. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool way of just getting it done without uh, making it super tedious where you have to carry people around and stuff. So um, abilities wise, we could talk about that a little bit. Some of them have this focus where they can uh, regenerate awareness. Uh, one that's really cool is this worn ally where you instantly restore 100 awareness to an allied character. This is really good for, like, if somebody's pinned down and they ha they're on zero awareness, and if they start taking a bunch of damage, they're going to die, you could use Worn Ally, which is a cool way of being like, hey, you know, look out, you've got guys, sh you've got guys coming towards you, whatever, and then you kind of imagine they're, like, more on alert, and they can then start dodging shots and taking less damage, so... I'm listening so hard right now. I'm a little concerned about uh, this agent here. Um, we can actually check their patrol route. So if we hover over them, we can see where they're going to be moving to next. So we know she's going to go here. Um, I, she is kind of in the open there, but do we want to do this quietly? Do we not? It's a tough call. We'll just move these guys into cover for now, and uh, we'll end the turn. So, we should probably start thinking about how we're going to get up to release that guy. We have a uh, civilian over here, which will raise the alarm if things get nutty. Um, so, this is protected. This room has three doors, all protected by these lasers. Uh, we have a staircase here. Seems like that's the only way to access this, or is it? Uh, we actually have a way up through here as well. Um... So we, we do have options. We have options. I'm not going to try and do this, like, completely stealthed. Uh, we're going to likely just get into a fight here so we can see what combat is all about. So let's start bringing these guys forward. And we'll go inside, up the stairs. We do have cameras, like, everywhere, which you can see their detection radius is pretty big. I don't know if we're going to be able to sneak past here. Um, if not, it's fine. We'll trigger the alarm. We'll just kind of, we'll just fight and see how that is. But yeah, I'm really liking the way that they've implemented some of this stuff. Like, you can argue any tile-based kind of strategic game is going to be compared to XCOM, and rightfully so. Um, but the way that they've implemented this, removing a lot of that, like, removing the RNG, basically... It's pretty nice. You feel like you're a lot more in control of what your guys are doing. And it'll make for some interesting strategic decisions because you don't have to do as many, like, what-if scenarios, you know? Now, Canasta, I can just send her, like, right out here. And because she's in plain clothes, like, nobody's going to start freaking out. Um, maybe we want to take down these civilians so that we have some extra time before... Waiting order. Before they start detecting us. One of the cool things I have noticed that they'll do is uh, eventually they'll 
they'll say, oh, well, these guys haven't reported back from their posts in a little while. And they'll just start sending people to look for them. And if they see a dead body or if they see uh, one of us, then they raise the alarm. So it's a cool way of like putting pressure on you as a player to constantly be doing stuff. Uh, I will hide these other bodies if I can. Let's go disposal here. We'll hide this one. Okay, beautiful. And then deadpan, can you take the other? Now you'll notice this one, uh, it only took one movement point. That's just based on distance. If we were standing right next to them, I think it just takes the firing point to do it. Um, so it's like, contextually, it's giving you the, the requirement based on where you're standing, which is cool. Um, okay, should we maybe set up... We don't know where this woman is. She was walking this way. I'm listening so hard right now. Huh? Here, let's just sit I... behind this box. Um, Magellan, let's put you in here. If we can go and rescue that person, like, ASAP, that'd be nice. We can open and close doors. I know, it's shocking. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this detection radius is, like, the whole thing. So if we're gonna get through here, we're definitely gonna set off the alarms. <sighs> Uh, let's just end the turn. I think what we'll do is we'll go for a takedown on these civilians. Now, takedowns, this works in a really interesting way, in my opinion. So, it's not going to be a great demo here with civilians, because they don't have HP. But let's imagine that this guy, um, did have HP. Takedowns is an ability, um, that compares your current HP to an enemy's HP, and if yours is higher, then you can just use a takedown um, to disable them instead of killing them. And the downside is that it uses up awareness. The upside is that awareness regenerates over time. So just to demo this, let's, uh, let's do a takedown here. You'll see our awareness drops pretty heavily. Like, that's not an insignificant amount, right? Um... Let's do another one What's here. Needed? Let's do a takedown. I should have actually seen there. Lamster had somebody... <sighs> had an extra target. Where is this? Ah, we see somebody inside. Is this... Uh, okay, so this is a trench sapper. Not an agent. Um, if we could get a sneak shot off there for 80, we could kill him. What do we have here? Target's damage threshold is too high. Let's huh? let's try and get closer with some of these guys. We have things like headshots too. Like, look at this damage. 116? That could be pretty nice. And it's silenced. Maybe we try and bring him around. And target that guy. Before we set off all these crazy alarms. Let's just hang here for now. Uh, one thing we could start doing, uh, we could set, like, we can set overwatches. So, overwatches are pretty cool because you have to actually aim them. Uh, and it's weapon specific, too. So, if we select this guy and we say overwatch, we have to, like, aim this cone out and say, anybody that enters that cone, we're going to take an overwatch shot at, right? Um, if we have, like, a pistol and we do an overwatch, it's an area around us. You can see that area is kind of expanding. Just cool. It's very, um... You got it. You really got to think about where, you, where you're expecting enemies to come from. We know that there's an enemy back here, uh, so it's possible, but this is, like, the maximum range. I don't think she's going to show there, but just for point of example. Okay. Okay, here we go. So some guards failed to report back. Enemy agents suspect a breach. They, they are now actively looking for us, and they're going to find us. I'm here. Okay. So, this guy does have awareness. We can either let them try and find Standing us, by for or uh, we can continue to hide. Huh? 
We have all the bodies hidden, so we could probably okay. hide a little bit. Um, I wouldn't mind trying to see if we can get this headshot off over here. But we're gonna have to, um... We're gonna have to keep moving. If we want to do this. Uh, these guys also will, like, jump through windows. It doesn't seem to trigger the enemies, I don't think. I think maybe if they're close enough, they might hear it and react. Yeah. Like, in that scenario, his detection range is, like, just right in front of him. Even notice, like, beside him, we could run an enemy, or we could run an agent in here, and he wouldn't detect them. So we can kind of, we can manipulate them where we need to. Okay, let's, uh, let's dispose of this body. And we'll dispose of this body. Yeah, see, so it's just the firing point there. Which is nice because we went and took them down. We can use the firing point next time to dispose of them. And then we can still reposition our guys. Need me? Which you can see, you know, it's a pretty nice advantage. Uh, let's go here. Now, we're getting a bit away from our imprisoned agent, but uh, what we're trying to do is... Oh, look at this. She's visible down here now. So, I wonder if she's going to see deadpan. Her detection range isn't going to be this long, so we should be all right. So, they're still hunting. I really like that. I like that it's like, if people just aren't showing back up to their posts, then... It's a problem, and they go looking for it. I think we'll have to take down this civilian. Uh, see, our, even just on that the takedown that we did earlier, like we're already full awareness again. It doesn't take a long time to uh, regenerate. Let's do that. And then we'll dispose of the body. I like that, like, the cool little almost cutscene-esque way that they do it, too. It's nice. They do that for a few different things, actually. Okay, now, uh, was it this guy? Cobra? He's got that headshot. Yeah. Let's try and get closer here. These guys are definitely on yeah. on to us. And we will fight, like, don't get me wrong. I just kind of want to explore both avenues of combat, where it's, like, a little bit more stealth-focused, a little bit more uh, combat-focused. And we'll, we'll try and do both of those, so. Um, now, he does have this guy targetable. Um, we have... We have the headshot. So 76 wouldn't quite do it. Now, because he doesn't have awareness right now, that's how we can just, like, we can take advantage of him and take this guy out. If he was an agent, like we saw the woman on the right, or those two that have approached us, um, they have awareness built in, so this wouldn't be as effective, right? This also costs us 50 awareness. So the trade-off is that if we get spotted soon, then we're going to have less awareness to work with. So I'm going... Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just buckle down here. You know what? You know what we should probably do, actually? We should probably start overwatching, because these guys are getting pretty close. I'm going to set my range down here. Likely. Likely she's going to be ready to go. Our sniper... We can overwatch down here as well. I'm here. And deadpan. We can overwatch. Okay, so this one's circular. We'll overwatch this area. 
Okay. Um, I'd like to talk about this breach. I don't know if we'll get an opportunity, but uh, it's a pretty cool mechanic as well. Okay, he might be just going back, I wonder. Uh huh. Nice. Okay. Okay. So we're still we're still doing things kind of quietly. Um, the problem is is that we don't have a good way. Like, I'm trying to see. Do we have a path? Actually, we do have a path to get here, and maybe disable something. If we hold on a second, we had. Uh, Okay, funnily enough, it's this guy. We've got lock picks. This door is showing... Oh, not that door. This door is showing is locked. But there is something in there we can disable. Yeah. So let's go and take a look, see if we can make that happen. Plane closed first. Okay, we have an enemy in there. So if we do unlock that, we would want to have a good way of taking this guy down. What the? I'm with you 100%. Um, let's bring him, the lockpick. And if we wait, like, he's already actually got the ability to do another headshot. Um, so if we can get him into visual range of that guy, might be able to take him down. Now, I don't know if we can shoot through barred windows or not. I don't know. Yeah. And these guys, I don't know where they went. Okay, so we see one, two. Yeah, we'll try and do this. We'll try and disable these to see if I can show you how that works. Mm. I'm here if you need me. Uh, let's not set up overwatches. Let's just end the turn. Okay. Uh, so it was him with the lockpick, right? Yeah. We'll set up next to this door. So we are trespassing now. And even though he's in plain clothes, we're in an area that's like... No regular people should be there. So it'd be a bit of a problem. Uh, lockpick. I guess we just select it and it will happen. But, yeah. I want to see... I want to see if we can target this guy. So we can. Um, we need the headshot damage to do it, though. So you see the 86 and the 9? So we would do 86, because he has no awareness right now. But this will do 116. Uh, for sure. Does he have a camera in there? Not that I can see. And it is suppressed. That's so cool, man. Okay, neat. I like that. I like that a lot. And, like, you could get into, like, you could throw down and get into a serious firefight right away if you wanted to. Um, but my, my personal play style is I, I generally err towards uh, stealth where I can. Um, but we will fight for sure. I'll set something up. Okay, let's see. Does this just work? Oh, nice. That's cool. Okay. Then we can come here. Oh, we don't have any moving points left. Wait. Let's open this up. My skills are at your disposal. She can come in and disable this. Now, that's going to open up some, some options for us on where we can approach from next and how we can try and tackle these guys. Um, there's another one here. You see, this camera is still active, but other cameras are not. So which cameras got disabled here? These are still on. This one is still on. I'm trying to see where the others are at. I'm not sure which one's got disabled. Exactly. Maybe something up top? We're pretty far from our, uh, from our rescue here. Uh, hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, let's start bringing these guys down. The other thing that you'll notice in the uh, in the notification where these guys are patrolling is they will turn on cameras that they're walking past that yeah. have been disabled. So they might be near the ones that got disabled and they just turned on. I'm not sure. But I think we're going to try and set up a, a fight here. I might look to see if we can disable in here, but the only way that that could happen is by accessing it through this locked door. Now that equipment, that's single use. Uh -huh. So I don't know if we have another uh, lock pick or not. Doesn't look like it. No, it's on your mind. Okay. So if we had another lock pick, we could come in here and disable this one, but I don't know. We might be able to get it through this door. Standing by be tough to say. But I want to get these guys all grouped up so that we can uh, engage in a fight. So here, they're going to destroy classified documents and re-enable any cameras they come across. I'd have to watch that back to see which cameras got disabled. It looked like it said three did. What do you require? Uh, but I'm not sure which three. Okay. Let's take a peek in here. I don't see anybody, but we do have classified documents here, which is cool. So the way that this works, let me snap a photo of these. This is so cool. Uh, these are documents that when we get back to like our main base, we have to analyze, we have to pick out code words, and then we have to make different connections on this like cork board and like with you 100%. really, you know, get in there and, and do it. It's super cool the way that they've got it set up. Okay, I'm going to bring in, uh, we're going to bring in Gemini here. That shot of his, that headshot's really powerful for taking yeah. out these, like, these stronger guards. And then we'll just keep following with these guys for now. I'm here if you need me. Now it's on your mind. And Durand all the way down. I mean, this would be such a nice one to take out. Uh, this one would be nice to take out, but... I don't know that we're going to get that option. I'm here if you need me. Uh, let's open this. Do we see anyone? No. And... Oh, yes, actually. Who's this? It's a civilian. Okay. The problem here is that we can't walk into this room. Uh, we can walk in from this side. Or we could walk in from here, but the only way to access this, it looks like, is through maybe this back area. And we'd have to take out this person. You can see how it gets pretty intense. Uh, we also could go up from here, though, and cut across to get this guy out. Maybe that's the play. Maybe that's the play. Uh, I'm going to try to, like, redo the door here. Close that up. I'm here. And we're just I trying to get these guys a bit closer. Once that happens, we'll go. Uh -huh. But I'm glad I could show you some of the stealth stuff. It's been working out pretty nicely. Um. Uh. Okay, let's keep moving. I think we will go up top. And then we'll like, we'll just open fire on like the next person that we see, I think. Oh, I should also check this. I just realized that's available to us. Nice, so we can actually get like weapons and then we got more classified documents. What I do like is that it shows you how many are available on the level. So if you really Whoa. want to take your time and try to collect as much intel as possible, that will only help you in the long run. Yeah. All right. Uh, 
So let's come in here. We'll take a peek inside. Oh, there is an ability somebody has. Is it him? No. Um, somebody has like a heartbeat sensor. Warn ally. I'm listening so hard right now. Take down. Gas bomb. Zen regenerates character's awareness. No. Exertion. What does this one do? Improve the movement ranges character by two per AP. Last two turns. Okay. Is it Durand? Heartbeat sensor. Yeah, okay. So Durand has this. Um, what this does is reveal enemies in the area of effect without having line of sight. So look how big this is. We already know what's in this area, but we should have him like up front so he can scan rooms and stuff. I'm here. I trust this is important. Oh, it's important. I appreciate their little banter as well. It's, what the? it's pretty nice. Uh, can you get all the way up here? Yeah, you can. Waiting orders. <sighs> so let's see. Does this? All right. Sorry, I alt tab there for a second. We're back. They're still hunting. We want to get Durand in close with these guys, and then for these locked rooms, we could try out this uh, the sensor reader and see how that works. What's needed? Let's bring these guys up. Let's keep going. Uh, we do have a camera here. Hmm. We don't have anybody down. Oh, we have a camera on that side too. So okay, the idea of going across the rooftop to get our to get our guy is pretty cool though. Okay, and then let's just wait a turn here. What do you require? And we'll try out the heartbeat sensor. We could just open the door. Let's What's actually just open the door. Okay, so there's somebody in here. What is a civilian? All right, fine. Let's uh, let's try it anyways. What the? Heartbeat sensor. It's got. It uses 15 awareness. Has a two-turn cooldown. It's not too bad. Oh, it actually just shows us. Oh, that is cool. Wait okay. So why don't we do this? Why don't we go in here? Uh, here. Let's open the door again. And could we just go and like, take her down? Yeah, let's do it. <coughs> Sleep. <laughs> It's so cool, man. And then we've got uh, some intel here. Hello. All right. Okay, so it is like, it's go time. This is like a pretty cool way to demonstrate the possibilities of stealth, actually. I'm having a lot of fun with this. But I also want to show you guys the combat. And we're going to just, next person that we see, we're going to throw down. Uh, let's stay on this side. I like this too that they will um, destroy some of the documents and encourages you to like make moves and just keep going. These red lines that we're seeing are showing us the restricted zone that we are quite obviously in at this point. What the? Uh-huh. I trust this is important. Okay. Now, what else do we have? We have a camera up here. No camera here. So we're going to want to get through this side. Is 
It's like the longest possible way if we wanted to get to this person from the get-go, but we kind of stumbled on this by accident. Seeing that there was that locked door on the side, that was pretty cool. We only had the one lock pick, but I could definitely see value, like, learning from this. Um, unlocking that alternate kind of approach. Otherwise, that this would not have been possible, because everywhere else it looked like it was pretty much blocked off. Whoa! Who sees us? Whoa. How does she see us? I guess her just walking out here? Yikes. That's heavy damage right there. Oh, she found the... Oh, the dead body. That's right. We never went into that room. Alarm rate. I like that it tells you that. We never went into that room and uh, disposed of that body. But this is fine because we want to be shooting. So he's got no awareness now, which is really bad news. Do we have a visual from here? It looks like we do. So maybe they do like a kind of a slide out. Um, 80 damage there on full auto. How much here? 69, 74 on full auto. We definitely want to use full auto for our first shot. To uh, get rid of the... To get rid of the awareness. So I'm going to bring Deadpan in. Let's go full auto on her. And keep an eye on her awareness. We're going to deal... Uh, I guess 17 damage if we miss the shot. If we quote unquote miss the shot. Because she's at full. Yeah. Nice. So not only do we do that 17. But that's basically removed all of her awareness. And so every other shot that we take is going to be for full damage. So 63 here. Just seeing if there's any other better shots that we have. No, nope, this works for me. And they're bringing in reinforcements as well, which is going to be great, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, what do we need? We need 36. Trying to use like as few bullets as possible. We can do it with this one. We have a ton of ammo in this gun. Just because we don't want to waste time on um, reloading, right? We also have this sure shot where we can guarantee that shots can't be dodged, which basically ignores um, awareness. But you can see two turn cooldown, a lot of ammo, all of that kind of stuff. So we do have ways of dealing with it if we need to. Okay, nice. Now. Uh, the beams are down. The all, all the stuff is off. I guess that's because of the fact that we've triggered everything. Let's uh, release this person. Now, they only have one health. Uh, who's carrying... Who's carrying a med kit? Frag grenade. Whoops. We have a med kit here on Canasta. Don't sneak up on me like that. Let's do this. We'll bring her outside. I just got a glimpse of some possible intel there as well that we could maybe get. Canasta, first aid kit. Yeah, right there. Now, you see that little 25 that popped up there? I'm pretty sure that that's because she has empath. Yeah. So when she heals others, then she gets a little bit as well, which is kind of nice. Okay, now, enemies could come from here, they could come from here, they could come from here. Wait, we actually see an enemy back there. Oh, no. Jeez, I thought it was somebody else. This is actually bad. Because... We have a 16 damage shot if we want, or we could take a burst shot from here. This is too far. Uh, he's got no awareness, but <laughs> neither do we, really. And it can't really move us because we've already committed. What is exertion? 
Movement range for the next two turns. Oh, you know what? Maybe we try one of our support things. Look at this. Do we see him? No, the wall is blocking. From the south, though. Gas cloud that deals minor damage and limits mobility and damage output of everyone caught within it. But it's blocked as, as well. I love that mechanic. I think that's really cool. I obviously wish we could hit this guy, but we can't. Um, Lamster can move, though. I'm hoping we still have vision here. We do. Too far beyond the range. That's unfortunate. Yeah. As far as I can tell, um, we don't have a clear... Um, a clear way of telling before we move if we're going to be in visual range or not. Are you sure? So I guess that'll just come with experience. Hmm. We've already moved over here. What other abilities do I have? Pick up agent exertion. If we had that Warn ability right now, that would be pretty cool. What's Bargain? Take 15 damage, but increase the agent's damage threshold by 200. But because we're in cover, he's probably going to target her. But she's got full awareness, too, so I don't know that we need to worry that much. I think we're okay. We both have full awareness up here. So we just have to believe in that. I'm here. Do we have... Okay, now we're in range, too. Beautiful. Let's take the burst. Okay. We are ready. Ooh, hello. So that was a full dodge. Zero damage. So the that's based on the weapon that he's using, which is a pistol. Whoa, we're getting swarmed here. Hello. One, two, three, four coming in. So do we have to take out all the reinforcements too, or just the original target? Uh-huh. Uh, all of them, yeah. We got 14 now. Okay, maybe this is a cool opportunity. Grenade launcher. Uh, wait. Grenade launcher east. Yes. Yes. Let's do this. Okay. So if we aim here... Uh, that's pretty cool. That can work. This will be neat to show you guys as well. Um, it costs five command points. I don't know where these come from, but I think we have 32 available. I'm not sure what builds these up, but I think that's the pool that it comes from. And then it's a two-turn cooldown. Let's confirm this. Yeah, so that is the pool it comes from. Check this out. Oh! And it didn't look like he was in the bubble, but maybe explosive damage from the... Uh, from the truck. Yeah. Now, Durand... This guy's in cover, so... Again, his awareness is still up, but... This is showing that if we take this shot on full auto... Uh, we will do the 10 uh, that we need. Because even if he misses, the minimum we're going to do is the 10. What else do we have? We have this guy way out here. What's our awareness like, though? Our awareness is good. So let's take this. The downside is that we're not removing awareness from somebody else. The kill is great. But the other two guys look like they have full, right? We gotta get our sniper in play here. Uh, we do have a headshot, actually, that we don't need other additional actions for. We just need a bunch of awareness. That's basically all of it. So if we don't kill him, which we won't, and we'll actually miss this because he's got full awareness. So this would be a total waste. 
Uh, unless I can get somebody else to drain that. Hmm. I don't think I'm gonna have vision, but I'm gonna try. Oh, I do. I do have it. Okay, so we want to go full auto here to remove the awareness. It's also gonna do like 22 damage. What's the headshot? 100 or 0, which it'll miss. So yeah, we want to go full auto. Get rid of as much of awareness as we can. Then the sniper can finish him, actually. I trust this is and because we're trading awareness of our own, 70 of it, um, we're not in visual range of the other guy, so this is pretty safe. Excellent idea. That actually works out rather nice. Standing by. Now this guy, I don't know where he went. Not sure where he's at. So we'll maybe set up an overwatch here. We know he's in this area. He's gonna have to come by this window, right? Who is that? Something like that can work. We'll set up an overwatch down here as well. I got a bad feeling. I trust this is important. Oh, she actually has vision. Oh, he's in that back corner. Wow. That's way too far. But, um... If I don't have... If, if he has vision of me, I don't know if... What kind of weapon he's got going on there. I'm gonna take cover here. It's basically nothing that I can do. We can't... Is he near a window? No, he's not. So our other abilities won't really work that well. Okay. Deadpan. Your health is concerning me. Oh, you do have a med kit, actually. Uh, yeah, heal yourself. Nice. Now, we're at about half here. We can't target this guy, uh, but what we can do... Oh, no, we can't. We can't use this anymore. Let's get into this cover. And there's no, like, kind of hunker down or anything like that, so... I think what we'll do is just hold here. Uh oh. He does see us, and we've used all of his, uh. Yeah. Great. So, this is a new guy we didn't see, and we used all his awareness. And we got five turns until more reinforcements are coming. Awareness down in Kanasta. So, you see how this, like. How this plays a factor? Deadpan at half awareness. Oh, he went here. He's got the grays. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. What equipment do we have? Smoke grenade. So if we wanted, we could use that for a little bit of extra health. Uh, we also have a flashbang. Reduce the awareness of all characters within the area. And now, if I wanted to do a reload, it would cost me both of my actions, but then I couldn't do a full auto attack. So I almost feel like I'm going to use the flashbang here to reduce his awareness. Okay, so it removes a hundred of it. I can't use the headshot here. I may want to rem I may want to move him. I'm not sure yet. I'm here. Deadpan. We don't have a ton of damage output. Um, 
It's because of his cover. It's the main part. This is better. Um, the burst actually gives us a little bit more. It confers a damage bonus if they're flanked or out of cover, so that's why we're getting this. Suffered some damage. All right. How can I help? Now these guys. We're, this guy's still pinned back here. What items do you have? Proximity mine? How does this work? So I have to like walk over and place it, it looks like. Okay, I'm going inside. We'll try and flank this guy. We need to do something about... We I think we just focus here. Regenerate the awareness. And then we'll... We'll get moving. Hit me! Okay, now. How are we gonna deal with these dudes? This guy is killable. With a shot from here. But then we're sitting here with less awareness. And that does worry me. We probably go full auto on him. We have the headshot. But his awareness is going to be a problem. I think I'll go full auto here. And we'll use the sniper to take out the other guy. And I hope that we have enough to mitigate some of his damage output. We do have the full cover. That you? We do have the full cover, and we have um, a little bit of awareness left. Whoa! I don't know what you're shooting at there, buddy. All right, that'll work. <laughs> that was bizarre. That was bizarre. Uh. Wait, you know what? Why don't we do this? We have our sniper available. Yeah, let's do this. Look how cool that is. I love these little cutaways to the special actions. So cool. Okay, I got two left and we know where they are. I wonder if we get them before these reinforcements. Does that prevent that from happening? Okay, so I think now. we're set. Uh, we might as well do like overwatches. Who is that? I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, here it comes. He's coming up. He's got the awareness. Okay, there we go. There's where the damage range comes into play. Oh my god. He didn't give two Fs about Canasta there. We know there's one over here, right? Oh, he just moved there, I think. I think we got a glimpse of him. Hit me! Okay, we can actually... Hmm. Okay, let me open this door. Can I just go for a takedown on him? I should be able to. Because I have more health than he does. So yeah, I'm going for it. Beautiful. And those are kills unless they're civilians. 
We have a frag grenade. Ah, there he is. Oh, he's on Overwatch, too. <laughs> that was really close. That was really close. So what does this do? Deals damage to all... Okay, and it's 75 regardless of awareness. I like that. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. So now we need to evacuate our team. Now, we have different zones that we can evacuate from. We might as well take this one. Uh, let's do the helicopter. Cannot evacuate with a helicopter. Helicopter evacuation has not yet been developed. I'm on my way. Oh, I want... Maybe that's like a... Uh, it's probably just because of how they manipulated the save file. But either way, it's available, so it's coming in hot. Now, what happens here is... Um, once it lands, there's a certain time frame where it's like, um, you can gather danger if you don't get there enough. And danger is like a campaign measure for how bad things are. Need me? I'll let the game itself explain that at a later date, but. I'm here. I read you. Okay, so these guys are all in. Need me? Uh, reinforcements are in three more turns, but we got to do this in two. There's that intel over there, which I would normally grab if this wasn't just, like, a one-off mission. Or I would try to, anyway. Oh, you can't quite make it in there? That's fine. Now, what happens when reinforcements come? Will that, will that mean we have to kill them again? It'll be interesting to see. I love these cutaway scenes, man. Oh, so good. Alright, so we are in. This is where the evac is compromised, so after these three turns, um, it would be compromised and we get we gain what's called that that danger. But that was a pretty cool mission, man. We started out with a little bit of stealth, ended with some pretty cool combat, had to think our way through it a little bit, and uh, now we're getting out. Let's go. I hope that gives you guys a good sense of the game. Um, I got a little bit of practice time in. I probably played like three hours before I did this mission. And uh, there's still things that I would like to refine and work on, but I feel like it's easy enough to grasp, but it's probably really difficult to master. And like the the kind of strategy layer of everything is really in depth and I think that's going to be best done uh, from the beginning to kind of learn things as we go but overall hey agent exfiltrated beautiful uh, completed the secondary objectives no danger increase uh, evac compromise danger from MAA agents uh, or civilians not sure exactly how that works we collected five out of seven equipment and three out of six of the classified documents Boom, boom. Shake the room. That's it. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this is a little bit different, just doing like a one-off thing. The game releases, as I said, uh, the 14th of August, so next Tuesday. And uh, if you want, if you're going to buy it, you can, if you pre-order it from GOG, you get 10% off. But if you use my code down below, you get 15% off, and it helps me a little bit. But uh, it's... The, anytime I can do that and get like additional discounts for you guys, I'll always let you know and put it in the description. So if you want to check that out, then great. Let me know if you have any thoughts on uh, what you think of Phantom Doctrine compared to uh, like something that I know really well, like XCOM, and you guys probably all know XCOM really well. Uh, but this was fun. I, I liked it a lot, actually. And I think it's doing enough. It's doing actually way more than it needs to to separate itself from XCOM. Which is really nice. The systems are way different. Um, everything feels completely different, which is super cool. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.